The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hop along, Cassidy. The same hoppy you cheer in motion pictures and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one Kidnapper's Trail. It wasn't often the Bar 20 entertained visitors. So when Buck Peters first told us he was expecting a couple of guests, it caused quite a stir. And when we found out the visitors were going to be Senator Hyam Sprague and his 20-year-old daughter, everybody got downright excited. I remember it was getting on toward noon, and Time California and I were heading for town with a buckboard to meet the stage. While California was hitching up the rig, Buck Peters and I were sitting on the porch talking. Yes, Hoppy, it'll sure be good seeing old Hiram again. You know, I'm proud to call him my friend. And not because he's a big man in Washington and rich to boot, either. <laughs> Well, judging from all you've said about him, he must be quite a guy, Buck. Well, what's he doing on these parts? I thought Nebraska was his stomping ground. Well, it is, but being a senator, I reckon he's got to look over some new territory now and then. According to his letter, he's sort of combining business with pleasure on this trip. He's liable to change his mind about the pleasure part the time he's written that stage in from Cottonwood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not worried about Hiram. He can stand it all right. Of course, it'll be kind of tough on his daughter Kathy, though. Well, we'll bring him right out, quick as we can. They can get a good breast. California's coming with a buckboard now. Yeah, good. Uh, you're going to have to keep moving or the stage will beat you into town. Then, oh, uh, Hoppy. Yeah? If you see Sam Fuller, tell him he's invited out for supper tomorrow. He and Hiram went to law school together back east. I'll make a point of seeing he gets your message, Buck. If I don't see him, I'll stop by his law office. All set, Hoppy. These critters are ready to go. All right, California, let's get going. See you later, Buck. I don't know, Hoppy. The state should have been here a half hour ago. Ah, oh, they never do run on time. You know that. Either an hour earlier or two days late. Yeah, but they got an important passenger today. Well, here comes Sam Fuller. Looks like he and his horse are both in a sweat. I can't say I blame him. We're seeing exactly the North Pole today. Well, hello, Cassidy, California. Stage isn't in yet, huh? No, looks like it's running late as usual, Fuller. Well, this is one time I'm not sorry. I was afraid I'd be tied up in the office till I missed greeting Hiram Sprague. I better sit down a while. No telling how long a wait we might have. By the way, uh, Buck wanted me to tell you he's expecting you out for supper tomorrow, if you can make it. Oh, well, that's fine. Tell him I'll be there for sure. Fine. Stage is coming. Here comes the stage. Stage is coming, everybody. Here she comes. Boy, I'll say she's coming. Look at them horses gallop. <laughs> Wouldn't have been late if they'd roll like that all the way. Uh, those fools just try to raise a lot of dust in town here. Wait a minute, Look how that driver's waiting his arm. Yeah, I wonder what he's so excited about. What's the matter with him, anyway? I don't know. What's the trouble, driver? We were held up about four miles out. Two masked men on Pinto. What's that? Well, where's Senator Spray? Is that him getting out of the stage? Yeah, that's him. Hiram, what's this all about? And Sam, is Buck Peters here? Is he here? Uh, pardon me, Senator. I'm Hopalong Cassidy, Buck's foreman. He sent me in to pick you up. Hiram, what was that driver talking about? Were you held up? Yes, Sam, of course we were. Well, let's hope they didn't get anything valuable. Mr. Cassidy, they got the most valuable thing in the world to me. They took my daughter, Kathy. They kidnapped my Kathy. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Kidnapper's Trail. Hoppy in California had gone into town to meet the stage upon which Senator Hiram Sprague and his daughter were to arrive. The stage rolled in a half hour late, and the driver shouted that it had been held up. When Hiram Sprague got out, Hoppy learned that his daughter, Kathy, had been kidnapped. Back at the Bar 20, Buck Peters is incredulous at the story his honored guest has told. Hmm, but this is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard of. Something's got to be done about that pair of outlaws. But what? Too late now to search for them with a posse. I wouldn't want that anyway, Buck. We've got to think of Kathy. If a posse started breathing down the neck, well, you know what might happen. The center's right, Buck. 
We'll have to be mighty careful. Would you mind reading that note you were handed again, Senator? It simply says, Your daughter will be safe if you follow instructions. Get $50,000 in cash, put it in a money belt, and wait until you are contacted further. And let's sign the whip. The whip? So that's what the leader calls himself, huh? You know, Hiram, this is about the third time a pair of masked men riding pintos has held up the stage. Only before, all they were after was the money aboard. Sounds like the same pair, all right. Did you say the stage stopped for a rock slide in the trail before these men appeared, Senator? That's right, Cassidy. The driver stopped. And then these two came from behind some brush and covered us with their guns. One of them stayed off a little ways and never once said a word. The other one forced Kathy out of the stage, handed me this note, and rode off with her. Did you notice anything about the men or their horses that might help us? Well, I don't know. It all happened pretty fast. I... I didn't notice the mark of some sort on one of the horses, though. Well, what did it look like, Hiram? Can you describe it? As I remember, there was a large M with an upside-down V on top of it. Well, that would be the Raffer M brand, Ward McCauley's outfit. Yeah, now we're getting someplace. He and his men have been suspected of dirty work before, Hiram. Well, I wouldn't depend too much on what I told you about that mark pocket. It was on the far horse, and I couldn't swear it was a brand. My eyes aren't the best anymore. If I'd only used good sense, I'd have kept your visit a secret. What? Why, did many people know I was coming to the Bar 20? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I couldn't help bragging a little. I reckon everybody for miles around knew it. Well, I did my share of talking about it too, Buck. Now, don't go blaming yourselves for this. I shouldn't have brought Kathy out of this forsaken country in the first place. Oh, now, it's not that bad, Senator. I got a feeling she's going to be all right, and you'll be seeing her again real soon. Oh, I hope you're right, Cassidy. I'd die if anything happened to her. Oh, now, Hiram, try not to worry too much. Well, I think I'll mosey out to the corral, Buck. Uh, let me know if you hear anything more, will you? We'll do it, Hoppy. Oh, hello, Cassidy. Buck and Hiram inside? Yeah, they're in there, Fuller. Go right in. Oh, thanks. Oh, come in, Sam. Come in. I think everything's going to work out, Hiram. Albright said if we'd all meet him at the bank this afternoon, he'd give you the cash, so there's nothing to worry about. Well, it's fine, Sam. We can all go on the buckboard. Hey, but, but first, let's grab something to eat. What do you say? Looks like Macaulay's running quite a herd this year, California. We're after him, cattle scattered all over the place. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was a few head of bar 20 stock mixed in with him. Of course, I wouldn't want more Lord Macaulay to know I thought that. <laughs> Looks like you better stop talking then. Huh? Look coming up the trail. Unless my eyesight's failing, that's Macaulay now. By golly, you're right. Wonder what he's doing out here. He's probably wondering the same thing about us. Well, at least he's saving us some riding. Won't have to go on into his ranch house now. Yeah. I wonder if one of his men spotted us and rode in to tell Macaulay we were headed that way. That's just about what happened, I'll bet you. Let's pull up here. He's sort of a mean-looking cuss, ain't he? Well, Cassidy, what brings you out of my place? Well, I thought maybe you and I ought to have a little talk, Macaulay. Wondered if you'd heard about the kidnapping. If you're referring to the spray gal, I have. What about it? They tell me two of the men that took her were riding pintos, and one of them had a mark on his shoulder that looked like the Rafter M brand. What? Why, you're crazy, Cassidy. Maybe. Or maybe one of your men's getting forgetful riding a branded horse on a job like that. Now, look here, Cassidy. I'm getting fed up with everybody accusing my men of everything that happens around here. I don't remember accusing you of anything, Macaulay. I'm just sort of curious about things, you know. Well, let me give you some good advice. You stay off of my place and stop being so curious. You're liable to be a sorry cowpoke. My men won't stand for much more, Cassidy. Thanks, I remember that. And as long as you're so generous, let me give you a little advice. If you or your men had a hand in kidnapping the Sprague girl, you'd better be extra careful. Because if anything happens to her, I'm going to be gunning for every man that was in on it. <laughs> well, I'll give my men your message. Now get going and don't come back. We're going all right. But don't count on us not coming back, Macaulay. Come on, California. Let's find some better scenery. <laughs> Ah, uh, this looks like we're the two waiting for the stage. Let's have a look around. Both horses were shod, but uh, that don't help us, none. Uh, uh, what you looking at there? Something very interesting, California. Look. Interesting? Why, well, that's just an old cigar butt, Hoppy. Can't even tell what kind it is. Band has been taken off of it. Yeah, but there's still something interesting about it. Oh, well, Hoppy, it looks just like any other half-smoked cigar to me, uh... Well, there don't seem to be anything else around. Looks like they didn't even get off on their horses. 
I wonder where they could have taken her. Well, like I say, there maybe they took her to Red Rock Canyon or over to Indian Springs. No, I doubt it, California. There's no water in Red Rock Canyon. That's why most Jeffries had to abandon the place. And there's no buildings in the Indian Springs section. They'd freeze to death at night, not wanting to chance a fire. Yeah, I guess you're right. But where could they go? I've got a hunch they didn't go very far. Some place where they figured nobody think to look for them, maybe. Like where, for instance? Oh, like the bar twenty, maybe. Uh, the bar, the bar. To, oh, no. Hop, you <laughs> gone from Loco? <laughs> oh, I don't mean right around the ranch house. But remember the old shack over the foot of Purple Cliff? Sure, sure. The one we use at Brandon time. Yeah, nobody goes near that this time of year. And it's being part of the bar twenty. Nobody'd even think of looking around there. <laughs> that is nobody but you. Well, that might be worth a try. Let's hit the leather. <laughs> Now, we better tie up here, California. The shack's right there through these trees. Right, Hoppy. <clears throat> it's a sense they couldn't see us coming in along the foot of the cliff here. Did you see any signs of life? No, not yet. Keep quiet now. We'll sneak up to the back of the house and take a look through the window. Right. I'll keep an eye on the corners while you look inside. Yeah, keep me covered. Can you see anything, Hoppy? Yeah. She's in there all right. Tied to a bunk. Yeah? Any sign of the kidnappers? No, I can't see anybody else. Somebody's guarding her. He must be out front. Come on, let's go around. Did the gal look like she's all right, Hoppy? Yeah, and there's I could tell she did. Wait a minute. Let me get a look around the corner here. Anybody there? Can't see anybody. Come on, let's get around them inside. Oh, what do you want? Shh. Don't make any noise, Miss Bray. Who are you? I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and this is California Carson. We're from the Bar 20. Oh, thank heaven. I've been so afraid. Please take me away from Now, now, just take it easy. You don't have to worry anymore. Where are the men that brought you in here? Only one one of the men brought me here, and, and he rode off an hour or so ago. Untie those ropes, California. They're practically untied. You say only one man brought you here? Yes. There were two at the stage, but after we'd ridden a little way, one of them changed horses with me and rode off in a different direction. There you are, Miss Canty. If you rub your wrists a little, they'll feel better. Thank you. They'll be all right. Let's get away from this awful place. I, I'm afraid that man might come back. Look, I want you to go with California. He'll take you to our horses and get you back to your dad. Oh, but what about you, Harvey? I think I'll just take her place here, California. I'd sort of like to meet the snake that brought her here. Bridge, all of you! Don't try no monkey shines. That's fine. Now, what was it you were saying about wanting to meet somebody, mister? I said I'd like to meet the snake that brought the girl here. And what do you know? A rattler shows up. Shut up, you. Hey, gal, get the guns and toss them under the bunk there. Come on, get a move on. Y- yes, sir. Now, you with a mustache. Tie the gal back up there tight. Tie her up yourself, you Do as he says, California. Well, I'm glad to see one of you's got some sense. Hurry up, you. I'm a hurrying. I suppose you're figuring to ask some ransom for us, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a hot one. Who'd pay for a couple of cowhands like you? Nope, I got better plans for you, too. Please, mister, let him go. They haven't done anything. Oh, sure, I'm going to let him go, all right. Come on, you two. We're going to climb up to the top of the cliff. Then I'll let you go right over the edge. <laughs> now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Kidnapper's Trail. Hoppy in California, in trying to figure out where the kidnappers of Kathy Sprague might have taken her, thought of an old shack at the far end of the Bar 20, which wasn't used except at branding time. Hoppy's hunch proved to be a good one, as they found the girl tied to a bunk in the shack, but before they could get her away, one of her captors returned and got the drop on them. He informed Hoppy in California that they would all climb to the top of the cliff behind the shack, and then he would let them go, over the edge. Well... This ought to be a nice spot. The highest and steepest part of the cliff. And lots of brush below. Holy mackerel, Hoppy. 
They'll never find a trace of us down there. Yeah. Only we aren't going to be down there. What do you mean, Hobby? I don't know yet. Watch for a chance to make a break. Don't try anything, boys. I'll give you your choice. Either make a dive now, or I'll shoot and sort of help you get a send-off. Ah, uh, looks like you got a stranger. But you won't get away with it. They'll get you and whoever's in this thing with you before long. <laughs> Not a chance. The whip's got this thing figured out scientific-like. I'll be getting out of here, Pronto. And after the whip collects the money tonight, we're meeting at a new hideout for the split. Simple, ain't it? What about the girl? Oh, they'll find her right where she is if they don't try anything funny. Come on, get over on closer to the edge there. <laughs> Yeah, what's so funny, cowboy? Oh, I just remembered California here didn't get to the bank this morning, and you were about to throw a couple of hundred dollars in gold coins over the cliff with him. <laughs> that ain't funny. Oh, so you got some gold on you, huh? Well, dig it out and hand it over. Uh, doggone, now why did you have to go mentioning that, Hoppy? Might as well do somebody some good, California. Come on, hand it here. Yeah, here you are. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Work, California. Get him, Hoppy. Whoa, look out, Hoppy. You're close to the edge. Don't let him get that gun again. Jumping catfish. Well, he got what he was going to give us, California. Come on. Let's get back down to the shack. Feel better now? Yes. Thank you. I hope I never see another rope again. Oh, no, don't worry about that, Miss Kathy. We'll have you at the bar 20 with your dad in no time, won't we, Hoppy? Well, we could all right, but I've got another idea. Well, yeah, what's that, Hoppy? I think it might be better if we didn't take Kathy right to the ranch. Oh, please. I want to see my father again right away. Of course you do. But if you'll just wait a few hours, I think maybe we can round up this whip. Would you help us? Why, right. yes, sir. I'll do anything I can. According to what the other kidnapper said, the rest of their plan is already set. If that's right, the whip won't know what's happened to his partner. And he won't know we've gotten you out of here either. If we play our cards right, we ought to be able to lasso him before he finds out what's happened. Yeah, but uh, what'll we do with uh, Miss Kathy in the meantime? Let's ride that back trail over past the Simpson place. They'll take good care of her until we can find out what's going on back at the bar 20. Come on. <laughs> Dark already, Hoppy. And I'm about to starve to death. I'm, I'm sure glad we're home again. Yeah, I could use a little supper myself. You take care of the horses, California. I want to run in to see what's been going on while we were gone. Sure thing, Hoppy. I'll see you later. Come on up when you're through. And uh, don't unsaddle Topper. Well, Hoppy, where in tarnation have you been? Oh, I had some business to attend to, Buck. Hello, Senator. Hello, Cassidy. Hello. Fuller. Hello. Well, if it isn't Mr. McCauley, too. Sure. What's all the powwow about? Well, Hiram got another note from the kidnappers, Hobby. Here, read this. It was in the bar 20 box at the post office. Hmm. Put the 50000 in a money belt, and at 8 tonight, have a man you can trust right alone down the trail toward the creek until he hears a voice order him to stop. He will then drop the money belt in the trail. When it has been examined, he will be handed a note which he is to take back to you. It will tell where your daughter is. Sign the whip. It's outrageous. Why couldn't they turn my daughter over when the money's paid? How do I know they'll tell where to find her? No, Hiram, I know how you feel, but uh, what can we do? Yeah, Sam's right, Hiram. If we don't do exactly as they say, no telling what might happen to Kathy. That'd be my advice, too, Senator. How come you're so interested in this all of a sudden, Macaulay? Uh, he's offered to help us run down the kidnappers after we get Kathy back safely, Hoppy. His men and ours will join up as a posse, and with luck, we ought to be able to call her the dogs. That's right, Cassidy. We want to prove we've been falsely accused by helping track down those kidnappers. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Macaulay. I never knew you were bothered by what other people thought. Now, just a minute. Now, just please, a... please, man. This, this is no time for personal feelings. I think if Macaulay wants to vindicate himself and his men, why, it's only fair to give him the chance. So do I, Sam. And the more men we've got to go after that pair of skunks, the better. Yeah, I guess you're right, Buck. Well, all that's left to do now is to see that the money's delivered, eh? It's almost eight, and the moon's up already. We've got the whole thing arranged, Cassidy. 
Buck and McCauley are going to stand by here with their men ready to ride the minute we know Kathy's all right. Sam's going to deliver the ransom and rush back with the note. I just hope it isn't putting you in a dangerous spot, Sam. Yeah, well, don't worry about me. I'll follow the directions to the letter, and I'm sure it'll be all right. Of course it will, Sam. I certainly hope so, but no use borrowing trouble, I guess. Here, maybe a good cigar would cheer us all up. I've got some of the finest Havana's ever rolled. Buck? Well, thanks, Harm. Have one, Macaulay. Yeah, sure, don't mind if I do. Here you are, Sam. Thank you, Harm. Cassidy? Not for me, thanks, Senator. I don't use them. Hmm. You don't know what you're missing, Hoppy, does he, Sam? No, he sure doesn't. I wonder what I did with my holder. Isn't that it on the desk there? Say, it's getting later than I thought. Maybe you better get started, Sam. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well... I'm all ready. Don't forget the money belt for... Oh, great guns. No, I almost forgot about that myself. Here it is, Sam. And remember, don't do anything foolish. Give them the money and hurry back with a note. I will, Arm. I'll be back just as fast as I possibly can. What's taking him so long, Buck? Do you suppose he ran into trouble with them? Ah, Hiram, don't get all upset. He's only been gone an hour. Listen. Listen, isn't that a horse riding up outside? Sounds like it, all right. Maybe it's Sam. I hope so. I can't stand much more of this waiting. Somebody's running up on the porch. I, I heard as fast as I could, Hiram. Here, here's the envelope I was handed. Let me see it. Hey, you get a good look at anybody, Sam? No, I couldn't see him. Came up from behind and told me not to turn around and shoot. Listen to this. Your daughter is safe. You will find her at the old shack near the creek at the upper end of the bar 20. The bar 20? What? Well, come on, let's go get her. That won't be necessary, Buck. Well, what do you mean by that, Hoppy? I've already had her brought here. She's with California at the cook shack. What? But I don't understand. Let me see her at once. I'll go get my men and see if we can pick up their trail. Sit still, Macaulay. Posse won't be necessary either. What in tarnation are you talking about, Hoppy? Just this. California and I did a little looking around today, and we discovered some mighty interesting things. Like what, for instance? Like who planned this kidnapping, for instance. Hoppy, are you sure? Do you know? This is no time for jokes, Cassidy. He must be local. Wait a minute, man. Cassidy, if you know something you haven't told, out with it. Who was it? Maybe the whip himself would rather tell you, Senator. Well, where is he? He's standing just to your left, Senator. Hey, now, look here. This has gone far enough, Cassidy. If you're insinuating... I'm not insinuating anything, Fuller. I happen to know that you're the whip and that you planned the whole thing. Why, why, this is the... This is the most preposterous thing I ever heard of. It's a pretty serious accusation, Hoppy. You better have proof. I have, Buck. Pull his shirt up. Now, just a minute, then. Come on, Sam. What are you trying to hide? He's trying to hide the money belt he didn't drop on the trail. Sam, then it's true. Look out, he's going for his gun. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. I've got to hand it to you, Cassidy. That was the fastest draw I ever hoped to see. Thanks, Senator. Still seems hard to believe that somebody Dad considered a, a friend would do what he did. But how did you ever find out he was the whip, Mr. Cassidy? Oh, mostly luck, I guess. There was a couple of things that started me thinking. What were they, Cassidy? Well, when California and I were waiting for the stage to arrive, Fuller rode up and I noticed his horse was in quite a sweat, like he'd been running hard. That wouldn't necessarily mean anything to a happy. Ordinarily, it wouldn't. But Fuller said he was afraid he'd miss the stage because he was tied up at his office. And that's right close to the stage office. Sort of got me wondering later on. Yes, I can see how it might. But you must have had something besides that to go on. Oh, I did. When we rode out where the stage was stopped, we discovered this, too. Well, that's nothing but an old cigar butt. Yeah, but take a look at the end here. It hasn't been chewed up. And Fuller's the only one I've seen around here who uses a cigar holder. Well, knowing all this, why didn't you tell us right away? I wanted to be dead sure. So when Fuller rode out tonight, I followed him. He only went a couple of miles and stopped, and then just sat and waited. He didn't deliver the money to anyone but himself. Well, thank goodness it's all over. Thanks. <laughs> no thanks necessary, Miss Kathy. Just seeing you and your dad together again is thanks enough for me. Well, I'd certainly like to do something to show our appreciation, Cassidy. Tell you what, why don't you run for Congress? I can throw a lot of influence your way. <laughs> no thanks, Senator. I'm afraid I'd never make a politician. What's that? Why not? Who ever heard of a politician that didn't smoke cigars? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, quite
minor twist to the ending of Hoppy's story. But who other than Hopalong would locate the kidnapper's trail? Hoppy's next adventure takes him in California to a town on the border between Texas and Oklahoma where plenty of trouble always awaits any stranger. Hoppy calls this exciting story The Bandit of Blackton Bend. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr., Kidnapper's Trail was written by Robert T. Smith. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>